Hey, it's Coach Carol, and today I'm going to talk about ketosis. It has been a question that has come up, and I thought I would discuss it here because there's a lot of keto buzz out there, and it can be confusing as far as what keto truly is. I personally learned about it several years back when I opened up my wellness center, and it was not popular. It was not um, a big buzzword like it is today in marketing. Um, I approached doctors and they were not totally embracing it back then. Um, so it's an interesting time and it's been interesting to watch it evolve throughout the years to where now it has surfaced and has become this uh, marketing. Um, so that's why I thought I'd take the time to explain uh, what ketosis is. And I can tell you what it's not. It's not a drink or a shake or a bar. It's not a diet. It's not even a program. So ketosis is a process that happens when your body doesn't have enough carbohydrates to burn for energy. Instead, it burns fat and makes things called ketones, which it can use for fuel. So in addition to helping you burn fat, ketosis can make you feel less hungry. That's why you don't have the carb cravings anymore. It also helps you keep muscle. This is key. There are so many diets that we've seen throughout the years. And yes, you can lose weight fast. But are we looking at losing the weight or are we more focused on losing the fat and gaining the muscle? For healthy people who don't have diabetes and aren't pregnant, ketosis usually can kick in after three to four days of eating fewer than 50 grams of carbs per day. So this is where it's super important to reach out to a health coach to know if the program is right for you as far as going into the process of ketosis. It's not a one-size-fits-all. It's really not a do-it-yourself either. It's best to consult with somebody that understands the process and what to expect. So what do you think are some of the symptoms that you will recognize to know that you're going to ketosis? And some of you might have already experienced some of this. And I can share with you that my clients have experienced this. <laughs> I've experienced this. So I'm going to tell you 10 signs and symptoms that you might recognize as ketosis. Number one is bad breath. So yes, if you're having bad breath, there's a good chance that you're in ketosis. This is caused by elevated ketone levels. The specific culprit is acetone, a ketone that exists in the body through your urine and breath. Number two is weight loss. And it, you can experience um, quite a bit in week one. While some people believe this is fat loss, is primarily stored carbs and water being used up. So there might be a good amount of weight in the first week and then it'll taper off, but you're still looking at weight loss every single week as long as you stay on program. Increased, this is number three, increased ketones in the blood. As you progress further into a ketogenic diet, you will start to burn fat and ketones as your main fuel source. In other words, it's going to get easier as we go through and take it a step at a time. It's so important to have the patience and to understand what your body's going through. Uh, number four is increased ketones in the breath or urine. We talked briefly on this. This is where you're able to monitor the acetone, which is one of the three main ketone present in your blood during ketosis. And it can be done through um, a breath analyzer, or you can actually get special indicator strips to test your urine. And this Physically, you're going to know, you're going to feel it, but if you want to know if you're truly into ketosis, there are tools out there to measure it. 
Number five is appetite suppressed. It's been suggested this hunger reduction may be due to an increase in protein and vegetable intake. So your proteins and grains along with an alternative, um, along with your body's hormone, um, hunger hormone. So in other words, um, as we start feeding our body what it deserves, we're going to be um, creating more fiber and we're drinking lots of water and we're able to get those nutrients into the body. So it's going to feel fulfilled and you're not going to be craving carbs and sweets and all that because you're giving your body what it needs. Number six, increase focus and energy. Oh my God. When I got into day five is when I felt my energy just go through the roof. Day three and four, not so much. <laughs> day five, I said, that's it. I am cleaning up this entire office. I'm going to declutter. And I was like throwing out garbage bag after garbage bag of all paperwork that I didn't need anymore. My husband comes home and he's like, what in the world got into you? <laughs> so I'm like... I don't know, I just got this burst of energy to get this all done. So um, a lot of people report having that euphoric feeling and it's like, who needs antidepressants? You know, you're feeling so good. So that's number six. Number seven, uh, short-term fatigue. This is normal during the, during the transition. Um, it can take a while. Some go through it in the very first week. Others, it's a struggle where it's just like up and down for them. Electrolytes are going to help a lot with that. Um, because of the reduction with the body water, um, you're, you're going to need to replenish. And the electrolytes definitely help with all of that. So that's why I listen closely to my clients. And when they tell me that they are um, still feeling fatigue, I'll add add that component to their week and by the next week they're saying yes that did the trick I feel so much better so number eight is short-term decreases in performance so for all my athletes out there it's a tough one because when you're um, athletic and very uh, active um, we're saying hey it's time to slow it down um, just during this initial period because um, you, you just need to give your body that rest and it's a reduction in your muscles glycogen stores. So this is where um, a high intensity exercise would not be a good time to do it, but later down the road it's going to help your performance if that makes sense. So for me, I was doing yoga during this time because your body is detoxing at the same time. It just kind of went hand in hand where you're spending more me time, breathing techniques, relaxing the body, and letting it go through this transition period. So, but after you get past that point and you want to throw in exercise, it, it's going to help your performance so much more. Uh, number nine, digestive issues. Wow, this is a big topic. Obviously, it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, with all the gut issues I've had and when I realized that it wasn't necessarily me but going into ketosis will cause constipation or diarrhea for some I can't say for everybody but for some so these are all normal signs and symptoms and they will pass but I also have helpful tools on that so if somebody uh, is sharing that with me and I know it's kind of a personal subject but I'll give them information on what we can do to ease that and make it a simpler process let's say. <laughs> uh, number 10 insomnia. So there can be a case of poor sleep and insomnia in the initial stages of ketosis. Um, that too will pass. Again your body's going through a lot and it's going through a lot of changes and being introduced to foods it's not used to and also taking away some of the bad foods. So there's just this whole transition period. So the question I have for you is, is ketosis safe for you? Do you know how much to eat? When to eat? How often? When? I mean, what? 
what is the right formula? Well, it is all science-based. There is a way to do it and to do it safely and correctly. And that's where you're welcome to reach out to me. I will do a free health assessment. In fact, right now I'm offering free coaching. So take advantage of that where you can learn more about your body. I can learn about your health goals and get you on track so you can be to your levels that you want to be and be happy. So thanks for listening. Have a great day.